Hey, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Upper Michigan Today, featuring Andrew Lacombe as co-host. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Tia. It's, it's nice to be here. Yeah, it is finally feeling like February outside. It is. I was standing in line at Huron Mountain Bakery this morning, waiting for it to open, with the other people waiting for their poonchki, and people were giving me looks for, for wearing a skirt. And, I mean, if I had, I guess, picked my outfit out yesterday, it was, like, totally fine. Um, and now, all of a sudden, all this snow work. It's not a whole lot, but yeah. it, for... for um, I guess the context of what we've been experiencing yeah. this February feels like a lot out there. It sure does because when I got to brush off your car, yeah. or, you know, wear boots for once, uh, yeah, it's not what we're used to. And and Jennifer says, you know, it's just going to be about an inch or two of like mm -hmm. effect snow, so it's nothing um, that's really going to create a lot to shovel. But mm -hmm. it is slowing people down on the roads. I know people uh, near the station in Nagani Township mm -hmm. have said there's some uh, delays on 41 uh, by Castle's gas station. Looks like some cars off the road there. So um, definitely, if you got to get out somewhere this morning, leave earlier. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at, at what it's like in Marquette right now. Not actively <laughs> snowing, but yeah. you got to see that fresh layer you on the buildings there. see some fresh snow. And uh, yeah, it was definitely out there when I was uh, around going to the gym this morning. It was. It was a different different morning than what we're used to, but a, actually a very normal February morning. Very normal. I know I wasn't used to standing outside in snowflakes, but... Yeah, yeah, and uh, I know a little bit of light snow in Houghton uh, that, that we can't show you, but it's not enough snow to bring back some of these winter events. Far from, you know, definitely not enough. Right, the Copper Dog. 150, for example, is the latest of the Upper Peninsula events to be canceled because of the lack of snow. So the board chair says that it poses a risk of injury for the mushers and the dogs, and they want safety to be at the forefront of this event. So the organizers of the Copper Dog 150 are kind of following the lead of the UP200, and they're switching over to a festival format. So there will no longer be any races involved with the um, Copper Dog 150, but uh, fireworks and a block party on Friday, March 1st are still scheduled. So you still can celebrate the spirit of sled dogs, but it is a, a, a bit of a weird winter for that sort of recreation. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely strange. And uh, we'll keep you updated. You know, we're a big sponsor of the, of the mm -hmm. Copper Dog, proud to be. And uh, so we'll keep you uh, informed on what's still going to be happening mm -hmm. in the Calumet area that first weekend of March. It'll still be a lot of fun. You know, hopefully by then we've got a little more snow uh, to make it just uh, less brown out there. Right. right. And then this weekend in Marquette was supposed to be the UP200. We've told you about this before, but we just want to remind you that that is just going to be the festival of the sled dog now. No races are happening, but there will be a block party with hot cocoa music from 6 to 9 on the 100 and 200 blocks of Washington Street in Marquette. So you're more than welcome to attend that free event and still celebrate the spirit of wintertime and sled dogs. Yeah, and support those local businesses. I know... Uh you know, economic leaders in the Marquette area were watching hotel reservations. And I know it's not just Marquette, it goes mm -hmm. to Grand Marais, of course, with the UP200, uh, but now people canceling hotel rooms and that just uh, has a huge impact down on um, restaurants, gas, other activities people do. So if you're in the area looking for something to do on Friday, it does look like it'll be a little chilly, mm -hmm. but uh, you can get outside and get in the winter spirit and, and uh, enjoy our, our downtown. Yeah, just bundle up. <laughs> Six to nine on, on Friday, and it's uh, free. And then, of course, today is Fat Tuesday, a.k.a. Mardi Gras, a.k.a. the start of the Lent season, a.k.a. Poonchki Day by some. There's a whole lot of names for this. I already mentioned at the start of the show, I was there this morning, and even before the bakery even opened at 6 o'clock, I saw... 10 people lined up outside in the snow waiting to get their poochki because if you did not place a pre-order with Huron Mountain Bakery, it's just first come first serve. So you've mm -hmm. got to get in line. They made 15,600 poochki for today, but they still anticipate selling out of all of those. Yeah, and if you have a specific flavor you want, that's why you really got to get there early because right. uh, some go quicker than others. 10 different flavors. They've got the traditional prune flavor, the popular Bavarian cream. I hear that's the most popular one. So if that's your favorite. You might want to get there before noon to ensure that you can, well, get them while they got them. But Marquette's location is open until 7, and Ishpeming Huron Mountain Bakery location is open until 6. And certainly they're not the only bakery serving up Poonchki today. I saw a Campfire Coffee in Nagani has Poonchki. I know many grocery stores, their bakeries make Poonchki. So plenty of, plenty of places to get them. Yeah. But uh, 
you know, get out there early if you can to, mm. to get your favorites. And, and they, they taste better at this hour anyway. They do, yeah. when they're fresh. Oh, yeah. man. And then if you are looking to celebrate the spirit of Mardi Gras in New Orleans, Lanyap Restaurant in Marquette has some live music and dinner specials today, including what, what do they have going on? Crab chops, an oyster feast, brunch specials. And they normally only do brunch on, what is it, Friday, Saturday? Saturday yeah, yeah. So... One of my favorite brunches, you can get it uh, Get it today. Um, crispy frog legs, blackened alligator, king cake parfaits. Yeah. Sounds like the uh, great a great way to celebrate Mardi Gras today. Yeah, well, especially if you're going to be cutting back on, you know, yeah. fatty food, sugars, actually doing the whole Catholic Lent thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, get the food while you can. And then kind of, kind of over on, on the business side of things, a story we've been following in the news is is with the GINCC since the embezzlement of uh, one of the employees bezzled, embezzled $20,000. Uh, as of a meeting last night, the GINCC, the Greater Ishpeming Nagani Chamber of Commerce, has decided to dissolve. Yeah, and, and to be clear, obviously the case is still pending in mm -hmm. court, um, but uh, the chamber has to go in a different direction, and that is dissolving, and that Lake Superior Community Partnership is offering services to the west end of Marquette County. Uh, Chris Germain, the uh, CEO, uh, reassuring uh, business on the West End that the LSCP is different than it was 10 years ago and going over the benefits of uh, being a member and, and exactly what uh, they can offer. And we've got a full story. We had our uh, reporter uh, at that meeting last night, and that's on UpperMichiganSource.com and our mobile news app. So if you're on the West End, you didn't make it to that meeting, you can find out exactly uh, what's being offered. And then also over in, in the Marquette area anyway, the two restoration projects are now funda funded and moving forward. So the city got a grant to cover the $980,000 cost of cleaning the mouth of the Dead River as it feeds into Lake Superior by the Upper Harbor Ore Dock. That's the first project. The second project is phase two of restoring Lake Superior's shoreline between Holly and Pine Street. This, this project was approved in May of 2022, so almost two years ago, but it took 18 months for the city to receive permits and some of that funding. And this project will cost $5.8 million with about $1.5 million covered by a grant. And these projects, according to, to Marquette City Manager Karen Kovacs, will, are crucial to ensure the longevity of our recreational shorelines. And these projects are expected to begin shortly, though an exact timeline and date is still to be determined. Yeah, so when you see uh, construction crews or work mm -hmm. happening on the shorelines, just know that that's uh, environmental work. That's, yes, that's it's, not new, it's not new apartment buildings. No. It's restoration. Yes. All right, well, we have a big show today. Yes, and we I'm do. Happy to be here for it because uh, this will be our fifth time giving out the Carl V. Pellenpah Lifetime Achievement Award. And we have our winner here. They don't know much besides <laughs> the fact that they're being honored. Uh, and so we've got other members of our TV6 team that are part of the selection committee to talk about why we picked the winner this year. Actually, it's for 2023. And we'll be handing this out and uh, talking about some great memories and. Uh, obviously achievements and impact on our upper peninsula so we've got a lot of uh, a lot of good moments to share coming up this morning yeah a lot to cover stick with us we'll be right back <laughs> 